the Friday Rugby Preview with Stuart Cameron. Hello and welcome to the first Friday Rugby Preview of the season on Rugby Radio, where we look ahead to the club season in Scotland from a Borders perspective. And in the show, I'm joined by Dale Clancy as we look ahead to a very busy weekend of rugby. Plenty going on, as you can imagine. And Dale, it doesn't seem all that long ago that we were, we were covering last season's events. Yeah, it just seems it was a, a few weeks ago that we were watching Hoyk you know, clinch the double at Murrayfield and then we had the seven seasons to kind of finish the the year and we've already obviously had a couple of sevens tournaments as well so it's great to see you know rugby back the, the seasons upon us the restructured leagues there's going to be new shapes to all the squads and all the teams so you know another exciting season ahead of us well let's start with the premiership it's uh, the scottish champions and bill mclaren shield holders hoik who are at home to glasgow hawks and it was hawks who last beat the greens uh, at mansfield park going all the way back to i think october 2019 that's almost four years yeah, you know, it's it's a difficult first game. It's always hard to predict how this how the teams are going to come out the traps in the first game. Hoik, over the last couple of seasons, you know, albeit their success last year, notoriously quite bad. It's slow starting. Uh, two years in a row they've you know, they've not really hit the ground running at the start. And that's, that's such a difficult game to play uh, Hawks at home. Hoy could have been able to kind of maintain most of their squad. The likes of the big hitters, likes of Jay Linton, uh, remained. Ross Graham, they've lost their club captain, Matty Carrier, who's went off to pastures new, or pastures old, back to Peebles. Uh, but likes of Gary Lowry coming back in as well in the back row, showed up well in the sevens, and he'll bring a lot of experience into there as well to help, you know, bring on those younger players. So it's going to be an interesting make-up to see, you know, who's going to be starting in those jerseys for, for both sides, not just Hoyk, but obviously for Glasgow Hawks as well. We've mentioned, uh, of course, Andrew Mitchell many a time, and we always feel that uh, people like the, the South African uh, and, of course, Ethan Riley, as soon as they're playing alongside him, that brings out the best in him. Yeah, Wayne Griebenhau was the, the you know the the, the centre that you're kind of mentioning there, and he was brilliant. He was a, a really really good player who helped mould Andrew initially. I feel. But Ethan Riley was in recruitment sometimes when you bring foreign players to your club. It's sometimes hit or miss. Ethan Riley and Andrew Mitchell gelled so, so well. It has been interesting seeing the the squads in pre-season because Charlie Welsh has been in at 13. quite liked Charlie Welsh when he first came into the squad. You know, he made his debut against Jed in the Cup. His balance of running is really good. He's obviously raw. And I think Andrew Mitchell now then steps up to that leadership role, you know, starts to nurture him. And that could be a, a centre partnership, which is, is really good. Well, let's hear from Andrew Mitchell. We had a, a little chat with him um, just the other day, and this is what he had to say. We get on with the coach as well. They listen to what we've got to say and take it on board. Absolutely. So who are the ins and outs uh, at Hoyt this season? Lee's back. Gary Lowry's back. Sean Goodfellow's back and signed Fraser Anderson for Selkirk obviously I think Ethan and Matty Curry are only two to leave so retained the same squad so there's no reason why we shouldn't compete for both Cup and League again there will be some disappointed boys every week but it's just the competition and the way it goes it brings it the best in training and it gets players firing on a Saturday which is what you want Last season you went all through the season unbeaten uh, there was that uh dodgy playoff final uh, at the end which you finally got over the line uh, I think a lot of people have been very upset if the result had gone the other way the playoff system though is back so you have to embrace it obviously but do you like it? I think if you finish top you should just win the league because that's how most leagues work but it gives extra games but obviously when you've seen like us in the final we weren't at our best and just we lost the league even though over the calendar year we were uh, the best side obviously not losing the game so would say I'd rather just have top wins league and that's that and get into the cup stuff What about the pressure on the boys this year because you're Scottish champions first time for a long long time people will be looking at you know shooting you down and first up it's Glasgow Hawks the last team to beat you here at Mansfield Park so there's a nice story bubbling up here isn't there Every team we play now they're going to obviously bring you that bit more because we never lost last year and we've won the league in the cup double so we've got a target on our back so we're not going to be able to start slowing any games or slip up. And I mentioned it earlier on as well, this is your 150th anniversary season so everyone at the club will want to have a good season to commemorate that. Aye, oh, well obviously aye it would be 
fantastic to win the League and Cup again or even one of them on the 150th year to make it a year to remember even though it probably will be with some of the stuff they'll have planned I'd imagine but it's exciting Andrew Mitchell and uh, he'll no doubt be part of the Greens team tomorrow at Mansfield Park and that's going to be our live commentary game on Rugby Radio tomorrow with Stuart McFarlane and Bruce Aitchison calling the action and we'll be on air at half past two with the build up to that all the way through until five o'clock we'll bring you the news and score updates throughout the afternoon covering all five divisions in the Premiership and National Leagues and uh, I say 2.30 start is our new time Um, It'll be 1.30 when the clocks go back, so you get an extra hour and uh, more commentary as well. So something to look forward to when the clocks go back. Now, newly promoted Kelso, they're on the road to Musselburgh for their first game of the season. They've started off well with two sevens tournament wins to top the Kings of the Sevens table and also a good win over Peebles in the Border League. Their captain again this season is Frankie Robson. We really want to just have a go at as many teams as we can. We think we're, uh, we think we're capable of getting some big wins um, we're not silly enough to think that's going to come against away, away at Hoyk or away at Curry or anything like that but we're uh, we're really keen to put our best foot forward every single week so I think that should stand in pretty good stead we get great support at home we're extremely lucky for the support we get at home um, that has been a thing in the past where we've not performed away from home very well and we've relied on that Last season we got away from that and I think we only lost one away game all season which was uh, huge and us going all the way last year. Um, I hope that we don't go back to old habits and uh, fall away away from home but definitely the pointer support is uh, massive to us. Yeah. We've gained one or two but not no massive big signings or anything. We've just got a really good core group of boys that um, all stick in for each other and it's... Uh, Makes for a makes for a pretty good team, but again, at the same time, the young lads are fearless, aren't they? So um, they don't even know they don't know when to stop. Sometimes, so they're fine. Frankie Robson uh, leading Kelso into the Premiership and it's the first time for over 20 years that they've been that high and that's uh, fantastic news for local rugby and particularly those down Poynder Parkway. A real good feel-good factor, isn't there, at the club? Yeah, I think their their season last year was r- remarkable. You know, they they put a lot of hard work in, and you know, I even remember when we were at Stu Mel, and they were they had a really good first forty minutes, and it was difficult in the second, and you almost questioned whether Kelso had the longevity to to fulfil the whole season and be a, be as consistent. But they had some cracking wins in there, some really tough tough battles against the likes of Melrose and Air at a really pivotal part of the season. It's going to be a great battle, isn't it, between the four uh, four borders clubs in the Premiership this year? Forty percent from the borders. That's that's good to see. Yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting year. I think that the there's always times in rugby. If you look back at clubs' histories where they've been riding the crest of a wave and being really high and then sometimes they fall down and I feel that this season might be one of those years that a couple of clubs might be like ships in the night and might start passing each other Um, but because we've got so many borders teams in there that's what makes it difficult because form goes out the window and it's an old cliche but it does you know Hoyk were unbeaten all of last season but they drew against Selkirk at home because it was a border derby. The nerves come in. The players have a little bit more fight in there as well. Um, so, you know, you think about the battles that you've got. Kelso Jed in the Premiership is going to be, you know, home and away. You know, at Poinder and Riverside is going to be two of the games of the season. And then you've obviously, you've still got Selkirk in there. Hoyk, geographically not as close, but Hoyk are pretty close to the likes of Jed and Kelso. So it's going to be, you know, real cutthroat for those teams because... We've obviously got the playoffs as well, which you love, and uh, you know it's going to be interesting. Don't get me started. Yeah, I know it's. Uh, <laughs> it might be one of those things that the, one, we look back at one of those results and think, you know, that was the one where they really upset the odds and it's really ruined their season. So, but that's what we do it for. That's what we like this level of rugby, and it's great to see all the borders teams up there and having so much success because they're kind of truncated up towards the, you know, the na- the top of the national leagues anyway. Um, but nice to see four in the prem. And it was interesting. Well, last year because Hoyk and Kelso, both won the Premiership of the National 1, never made the Board League final. Yeah. That's, Extraordinary. And that that is almost the beauty of it. And I'd, I'd said, I think maybe a year or so before, that you could have almost split the leagues and went, we have a Premiership, you just keep them double-headers, and then a National 1 double-header. Whoever's top, they can then play in the final. And what would have happened the year before as well, is the team that finished higher in the table wasn't actually the team that got to the Border League final, and it was exactly the same. You know, Selkirk, obviously, Victor's picking up the, the Border League 
against Melrose, and it was uh, you know two teams that never got promoted, weren't high in their in their league tables in the end compared to the other border league teams. It was it was great because it means that the honours were shared about almost. Well, on to Selkirk, who have had a bit of a difficult pre-season so far, conceding over 50 points at home to Bigger from National 1, and it won't get any easier tomorrow when they host Curry. How much should we read into that scoreline? I think quite a bit because it's your last hit out before you play in your first league encounter. And the reason I say that is because I was uh, speaking to Craig Borthwick before that game and he was saying that Bigger wanted to get their rugby into their players, their starting team ahead of the campaign. Now, they've obviously got a lot of good players at Hartree Mill as well. So, you know, they've went out all guns blazing. Whether Selkirk, because there wasn't a twos game at the same time, whether they've balanced their squad, that might be the case, but they still don't have players that have been... You know, that you're coming up, going into your first game against Curry, who I probably heavily fancy to be there or thereabouts at the end of the Premiership season. They've maybe not had full 80 minutes. They've had training and that build up, and then maybe be, the partnerships have maybe been maybe broken up because of that game. I think you can look a lot into it. I might be sitting here completely wrong next week, but it's a that's a big gamble to have before you're going to be playing one of the teams that are going to be coming out wanting. You think about the way that Curry lost the Premiership last year. They're coming out all guns blazing, want to make amends, and they'll be wanting to obviously put in a performance after the back of what's happened in the last few weeks as well. They've got a lot, a lot of incentive to come out and put in a performance on Saturday. But there's a lot of young players coming through as well. I know there's a lot of hope on the likes of Cameron Eason coming through. Got good run out in the sevens. He played really, really well in the cup tie at air as well. Um, so you know he's kind of new to senior rugby, but there'll be a lot of responsibility put into him as well if he you know is, is given a starting place at the weekend. So you know he's a talented young player. And that's kind of what they need. And they've got a new captain as well. Let's hear from him now, Scott McClymont. Before Christmas time, you'd think we were guaranteed to finish top four. But yeah, after the new year, maybe squad depth. and We maybe were a wee bit complacent in some of those games. We probably should have won. But it's just the way it goes. It's always tough in the Premiership. There's no easy games. Boys probably had less pressure when on the way days. And then when we were at home, we maybe tried to overthink things too much instead of just playing rugby. We were training up against Gala on Tuesday night, which was quite good. It was good of them to come down to Selkirk, and yeah, we were just running set plays against each other, and I think it really benefited both clubs. And you don't want to go back the way. We need to maintain our place in the Premiership. I think that's a big thing Selkirk has going for it, and we've got a great clubhouse and great facilities, and again, Selkirk belongs in the Premiership. Scott McClymont, the new captain of Selkirk. Now, our other side in the Premiership, and remember we have 40% representation from the borders in the top division, is Jed Forrest. Andrew Brown has gone from the club with Kevin Barry currently overseeing things. And Kevin certainly knows his way around Riverside Park. And, um, well, they, they have Edinburgh Ackies at home first off. Yeah, and Edinburgh Ackies are another solid team. We've got a lot of good players, uh, been consistent over the last few years. But there's been some great games between them, both of them at Riverside Park over the last couple of years. But, you know, I'm not I'm not going to speak about Jed Forrest in terms of what I don't know. Um, but what I do know is obviously there's there's a change in man, like a, a change in leadership there, a change in coach. Um, I thought Andrew Brown did a great job last year. Uh, they were able to put in some really good performances, bring a lot of good young players through as well. Which, which towards the end of the season, they were they were seasoned campaigners, really really good, performing at a really high level, and they finished comfortably. You know they were safe by some margin at the end of the season. We'll know more of the lie of the land after Saturday, but. They need to pick up home wins. If they pick up their home wins, then they, you know they'll, they'll be comfortable in the in mid table. Well, I spoke with uh, Clark Skeldon. He's captain again this season, and he filled me in on what has been going on pre-season down at the club. So obviously, uh, Andy Brown's moved on. Um, I'm not really too sure to comment on that, but um, we've got Kev Barry back. He's uh, kind of overseeing things just now with the help of Ross Goody and Yid Scott. Just good to see them back down. Um, and on the forward side, you've got Neil Cook and David Greaves. So between them five, you know, there's, there's a lot of experience there. Again, all want the best for the club. So again, you're getting good coaching. Hopefully that entices a lot of younger boys to come down and um, it helps bring us on. And even some of the older ends, again, you're learning every week. Again, what Kev Barry's like, he's full of rugby, um, loves it. So, nah, it's good. There's been a lot of younger boys, probably more new faces this year than there has been in past years. So it's good to see all of them. Um, young Mark Glenn stepping up for the Thistle. He was captain there last year. Um, he's getting a chance in the first this year. So it'd be good to see how some of the boys go and, and test themselves in the Premiership. And 
can kind of the passing of the old guard. There's a lot of older boys moved on, having families, stuff like that. So, you know, these young boys are gonna get opportunities to play every week and and pull the jersey on. And it's pretty much a case of send them out there, see what they can do, and they're only going to get uh, get better. So who aren't we going to see at Riverside Park this uh, season? I'd never say never to the majority of them, but um, you know the likes of Calm Young, Robbie Euston, uh, they've gone away to Australia. Finn Scott um, is in New Zealand, so you you'll not be seeing them. But as to the rest of them, I think you know who I'm on about. The I'll, young I'd, by I'd, any chance? <laughs> I'd never say never. I, I think yeah, and Gregor and Lewis have been about a long time. I think they've they've done their bit. Um, in the in their thirties now, of course, of still got plenty to offer though. The, in their thirties, oh, still got plenty to offer. But young kids, you know, other commitments. So we're we're going to try not to depend too heavily on them. I, they'd never see the club stuck like the their jailer men and all. Um, but the the club needs to move on um, and try and put some young young talent through. And if if we see them, we see them. If we don't, we don't. But Again, it would be great to see them every week, um, but I think they tell you they're sad, they'll struggle to commit to that, but like I say, they're going to see us stuck. Clark Skeldon. Now, last season, Jed scored many tries, but uh, obviously they conceded a lot as well, which is great for the neutral, lots of entertainment games, but uh, they'll want to be not so leaky at the back this season. Yeah, but if you're any team and you're developing, then at least you can identify that. You know what you need to work on. Like Jed have always been a really good attacking team. I can't remember a Jed team in the time that I've played or watched rugby that have uh, had an inability to score tries. They always have. And it's always been the fact that their defence sometimes has been a bit porous, especially last season. They've got a lovely brand of rugby down at Riverside. They always have. It's ingrained in their club, but it's making sure that you know they're stubborn in defence and they're organised and well-drilled. So all our four teams are against uh, opposition outside the borders. That leaves one more uh, match, and that will be Heriot's at home to Mar. Mar, new coaching set up, and they've been able to retain the likes of Blair Jardin. The Bickerstaffs are there. You know, they've got a, a, a really good squad, and they'll be disappointed with the way that they played last year because they were able to still maintain a lot of their players, uh, but they they kind of just disappointed a bit after the, the kind of the euphoria of the season before the the la the kind of the, the, the battle at Millenni, you know, they kinda of just fell away and they were never really in contention. If anything they were lucky to get a playoff place. But yeah, they'll they'll be going to Golden Acre hoping to pick up a result and, and get some momentum. But equally, Heriots are difficult at home to play. Um so it's gonna be an interesting game as well. Well, let's move on then to, to National 1. Melrose and Gala representing the Borders. Both came very close to promotion last season. Uh, this year, they have a young squad, but will they be good enough to compete at the top end? Uh, well, let's find out from the new captain, Angus Dunn. So Watsonians away in our uh, first league game this year. Um, just buzzing to get back to it. I think all the boys are. We're, we've really been working hard and training and building towards this. Uh, there's a great energy about the club right now, you know, just desperate to get back out there. Um, got a good hit out against Kelso at the weekend there and uh, went pretty well in our eyes anyway. So a lot of younger boys involved, which is great because they were getting experience, but they're putting the putting their hands up for those jerseys and making it a real tough competition for them, which is exactly what you want. Makes boys work harder. So now I'm just uh, really excited to get back out there and get some competitive rugby again. Angus Dunn, new captain of uh, Gala and the first time he's appeared on Rugby Radio. We wish him and the club, of course, the best in the season. And Gala on the road tomorrow, heading up to Myerside to take on Watsonians in the Battle of the Maroons. Melrose then, they were contenders last season under Burt Grigg. They've also got a, a new coach in Ian Chisholm, so they're going to be regrouping a wee bit. And he'll certainly give us an insight into the players this season with his sound bites. We got to know the most intimate details of uh, the people's players last year. I wonder if our eyes will also be opened when it comes to the Melrose squad as well. But for his first words this season, let's find out his thoughts going into tomorrow's match away at relegated GHA. We're not really sure what to expect. However, we have had um, some, some some pretty good information from uh, from our contacts at uh, Anik, Akis and and Mar, so um, we're really looking forward to to the challenge. It's gonna it's gonna bring in the first place, but but also looking forward to seeing where we are um, and and seeing the other results come in and uh, get an understanding of where we fit into the league table and 
Look, I think with one going up, uh, there's a there's a lot of pressure on. I think, that, I think our playing group are going to put they put a lot of pressure on themselves. They they want to do well. They want to be successful. And you know, we we have to think a little bit more process based and make sure that we're 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 chipping away game by game. We're looking at what's happening within the games and not just taking the scoreboard as our as, as our only measurable. You know, the, the the league's a big focus of ours, and and uh, and we we want to make sure we start with a bang. We're excited to get going. And uh, I'm really looking forward to five o'clock on, on Saturday afternoon where I can get the phone out, I can look at the results and hopefully we're on the right side of that result when it comes. But it seems a, a good fit, doesn't it, for uh, for both Melrose and for Ian Chisholm? Yeah, I think, you know, the the writing was almost on the wall, I think, at the end of last season when uh, Bert Grigg, it was known that he was going away and I think there was a little bit of work on uh, both the club side, Peebles and, and Melrose, because they, they both wanted to recruit Ian Chisholm because of who he is and his energy and what he, what he can give to a club. I think he's uh, he's still really well thought of at Peebles. Uh, they're really disappointed to lose him. I, I think he will really stamp his mark on Melrose. And likewise with Gala. It's a new sh- new setup, new shake-up. They've got some brilliant, brilliant players at Gala. You, you mentioned their captain, Angus Dunn. Uh, Liam Scott in the back row as well. They've got a lot, a lot of big, experienced players. Tim McCavanagh, uh, Gregor Mean going back to the club as well. And they've got a lot of good youngsters. So they'll certainly be there or thereabouts throughout the whole of uh, proceedings just because of what they've got at their at their clubs. Angus Runciman uh, captaining the team. Vice-captain Struan Hutchison. Uh, a lot of people surprised that he's still at Melrose, I'm sure. Some clubs have been sniffing around him. Yeah, I'd, I'd also heard, obviously, there was a, a few clubs looking after his services and... Uh, I I was I just thought he was he was brilliant last year. It's, it's it's more interesting I think when you see players go down levels when you can really see their class. So with that in mind, Ian Chisholm's you know he's, he's fortunate that he's got a playmaker like Struan Hutchison still at the green yards, and uh, you know he'll be wanting to try and get him ticking and get them on the front foot to to try and get out of the division. Switching to National Two and Berwick survived the five team brutal trap door last season in their first venture into the division for many years because they had issues getting results on the road. That was the main main problem with them, but they're very hard to beat at Scrimmerston, so should pick up points there again this season. Only one going down this season though, which will be a relief after the league reconstruction but head coach Colin Young will be hoping his team are nowhere near the relegation zone this season Disappointing we've lost some players but we always will wish them best of luck but back to us we've um, with them with them people leaving uh, it opens the doors for others to to really shine and uh, shine they've done in pre-season been really pleased with the boys fitness levels are looking quite good look forward to Stuart Melville on Saturday uh, we'll be wanting to put a big performance in on Saturday. Uh, and with the new laws, I think the the game has speeded up, opened up, and uh, it's a, it's an exciting challenge um, as long as it's kind of refereed of, um, uh, correctly. Uh, we've found a little bit in pre-season that some referees are allowing high tackles inside the 22. Uh, and outside the 22, they're, they're very sharp to penalise these. So... Um, I'm not sure what the real criteria is on that, but no doubt we'll we'll find out from referees throughout the season. Berwick will be playing Stu Mel, but have lost the Thompson brothers to uh, Kelso and Rory Hindhaw is back at Musselburgh, but they've still got a nucleus of quality players. Aidan Rosie is just one of them, and he'll certainly be causing problems again for the opposition. And an old favourite, Ali Grieve, is uh, captaining them this season. Ryan Grant is their vice captain. Well, let's hear from the new head coach at Peebles, Graham Patterson. And Peebles have got a home match to start with against newly promoted Gordonians. We've got some threats. We need to use them, but it's using them in the right areas of the field and, and at the right opportunities. Uh, and that's what we'll look to do. We've, we, we hope to have a good, solid platform and set piece. And Matty Carrier's uh, been working hard on, on uh, installing some good standards there uh, as a player coach uh, but for the scrum and the line-out. Um, and Greg Rayburn uh, getting the back line ready to fire uh, at the right moments uh, when those opportunities come uh, come to us during the games. Looking ahead to Saturday, uh, we've got a pretty balanced squad, I would say, with uh, lots of experience, but also some exciting young talent coming through as well. But one particular one to watch, I would suggest, is James Hodgkiss in the centre playing at 12. He's really impressed all the coaches and players uh, alike with his mature and skillful play at 12 giving us a bit more ball playing uh, activity round about that 12 channel which is allowing us to get to that wider channel a bit uh, a bit better and using those threats out wide when we can 
So yeah, he's definitely one to watch. But I think uh, what we'll be basing on is the fundamentals this week, making sure that our uh, fundamental principles of set piece, uh, good phase play, uh, and creating opportunities aligned with defending well when we when we have to do that as well, which I'm sure we will uh, at many points during the during the game. But yeah, confident going in uh, at home, strong home uh, support will see us through, and uh, we'll hopefully get that five points. Graham Patterson. Well, let's go into the East Leagues and a newly promoted Langham could be playing national rugby again soon if they continue the way they did last season. Nathan Smith has again been chosen for the third year running, I think that is, uh, as captain. And they start their campaign with a visit to Broughton. Here's uh, Nathan's thoughts. A lot of new teams in this league that I've never been to or places I haven't been for a long time. So I'm really excited to see what this group can do. Squad-wise, we've a few new youngsters come up through, Aidan and Brady Wilson. A couple of brothers have made the step up into the into the first team, so excited to see what they can do. Brady in the forwards and Aidan pl- uh, showing plenty of pace in the back. So we had our pre-season game a couple of weeks ago against Annan, and um, these new tackle laws are definitely going to be something new to get used to, but it definitely shows a more open and fast-paced game, so that'll suit us, I'm sure. We've actually also lost a couple of players. Um, Ewan Rose, he was a stalwart in the team last week, uh, last season. Played every game and just a constant voice. And Tom Wilson, an enforcer in the forwards, just a general hardy man. Ewan's headed back to Australia and Tom back to New Zealand. So they're big losses, but confident in the youngsters that are coming up through. I'm sure after the first couple of games, we'll know what this league's about. I know Broughton have got some decent players. A test first up. We'll definitely know where we're at after this weekend, but really excited to get back to it. Langham now in East 1, leapfrogging over Duns to become the Borders' ninth-ranked team, and they're a hungry club, and they'll be uh, well-focused this season. Yeah, I think, you know, it's going to be a, another a, a difficult and tough year for, for Langham, but obviously we're, we're able to have a, a really successful campaign. And, and what was a really, really big year for the club. So, you know, such a famous club uh, for the south of Scotland. And for the for the last few years, they've probably been a little bit in the wilderness slightly because of, you know, the success of other teams. And that's just the nature of rugby. Like some clubs are successful, they have their time and then things move on with growths of area and what have you and the appetite for rugby. But, you know, you're, I'm hoping that Langham are then starting to build these foundations for a, a little bit of a slow growth back into the picture again. And it'd be great to see them, you know, start to rise up and, and get more more into kind of the border league picture and start getting these battles back uh, back in on the on the rugby calendar. Well, Duns are in East League 2, along with Hoyt Lindeen and Hoyt Harlequin, so plenty of derbies to look forward to there. Hoyt Quins were champions last year, going through the league unbeaten too, so they've got plenty to look forward to. And here's vice-captain of the club, Adam Hall. Obviously, last season was, was really good, our first year back in the league, and, and we won the league, which was brilliant. It was brilliant to lead the boys last year, so trainings went pretty well. We've had a lot better numbers than we did last year, a few new faces. Deke Armstrong's came in as coach and done a good job. He's he's got his ideas that he's trying to get across to the boys and, and he seems to be doing a good job of that so far. We're going in pretty pretty cold to play Dunbar away this week. Fingers crossed we can get a decent squad together and go up there and and, and be competitive and see where we stand. Adam Hall. Now Hoyt Lindeen have started their pre-season in fine fettle with a couple of wins against Galloway M and Earlston from the league below. Their captain this season is Tom Huggin. We've had a really solid pre-season. Kind of had a lot of boys at training, and they've been good. To- they've been good, tough quality sessions there. We've had a lot of new boys. We've had 20, 25 players at training, which is very good considering last season. You know there wasn't many training at all. But that just shows you like what's changed this year. There's a big boost in confidence. There's a big change to attitude at training as well. You can we're coming, we're switched on. There've been a lot of tough sessions. There's been a lot of physical sessions. But that just proves that it's all for a purpose because, as you can see in our two pre-season games, two wins from two, looking very positive going into Saturday against Livingston. Livingston are a very tough side, but Erlston and Gal were tough games for us. There's just got to be a big change this year. I can already tell the boys' spirits are high. My spirits are high. The coaches' spirits are high. We've, we've been working hard and I think it's time to prove it. The boys are just really looking forward to it and just can't wait to get started. Tom Huggin, Hoyt Lindeen, uh, looking to do better this season. Well, in East League 3, Galloway M and Earlston are the Borders teams involved as they were last season in that division. We spoke with Earlston captain Ali Sesford. You know, we went on our tour to Berlin over the summer. You know, it was a real bonding experience for the full squad and we really took that that closeness into pre-season that's really helped 
actually get some cohesion around quite a large portion of the squad. It's always good to play against uh, opposition in a higher league. You know, it really tests uh, our structure, how we're actually going to play. You know, if you're playing against better opposition, they're going to expose where your weaknesses are. And that's really something that we can then go into the next week training, really focus on where we're weak, so that when the actual league starts, uh, we're, we're up and running and uh, we're hopefully firing on all cylinders. Obviously, going from pre-season, the way we've been working, the numbers we've been getting, we truly think that we can challenge for, for that top spot. So it's like definitely going into it. The goal is lifting that trophy at the end of the year. Where that comes to be, it all do, really depends on the boys' commitments. But from what I've seen uh, in, the, in the past weeks, the commitment's there. So we should hopefully be uh, up there in, at the end of the season. Ali Sessford leading Earlston this season. Well, of course, we can't wait to get started bringing you coverage every Saturday live on Rugby Radio from half past two. We'll be at Hoyk for their home match against Glasgow Hawks. We'll have TV highlights of that game and also Jed Forrest's against Edinburgh Ackies over the weekend. And don't forget to check out our new Scottish Club Rugby podcast, which is now out. There's a new website at rugbyradio.co.uk, as well as our main site for everything to do with Borders Rugby at bordersrugby.net. You will be spoiled for choice. Do check it all out and we'll see you on Rugby Radio tomorrow at half past two. But for now, from Dale and myself, a very good night.